Hi, this is Gary with MacMost Now. On today's episode, let's talk about how to set up messages and FaceTime if you have multiple iOS devices, each belonging to a different person in your household. So let's say now after the holidays, many members of your family have iPod Touches, iPads, or even iPhones. And you find that you have one Apple ID share between all of them. For instance, kids under 13 can't have an Apple ID so they have to share yours. So what happens when they get a message or a FaceTime video call? Well, since everybody's using the same Apple ID, all the devices show the incoming message. But there's a way you could set it up so that each device has its own address, its phone number really, where messages and video calls can go to. The way to do this is to set up individual email addresses. Now the other family members may already have their own email address. And if they don't, you should be able to get a free one very easily setting it up, say, at Gmail or some other free service. Once everybody has their own email address, you can then go into the settings on the iOS device and set up messages and FaceTime so they receive messages at that specific email address. Let me show you. Now I demonstrate using my iPad. And let's say this iPad is being set up for another family member, say a child in your family, and you want to be able to reach them via FaceTime for this iPad, but they don't have their own iCloud account. So we're going to go into Settings and then click on FaceTime. And you can see I already have FaceTime set up with an Apple ID. So let's suppose that's your Apple ID. And you can see it automatically added you can be reached for video calls at and that email address there. So this may be the same email address used on all your devices, uh, thus being the problem that a video call will then go to all those. But you can add another email and this is where you would add a unique email address that's only for this one device. So say you might want to, if you have your own domain name, call it uh, iPad number 2 at your domain name or set up a special email account or if this is for say a child and they already have an email address maybe just use their email address even though it's not an iCloud ID. So I've got some demo email addresses set up and I'll use one of those. And when I hit return it's going to say verifying. And then I have to go to uh, my email account. Could be on this device, could be on a computer, it doesn't really matter. You have to check that email address and you will get a, uh, a an email that says please verify the contact address with Apple. And it basically has a link. Click on that link and that verifies it. So I've did, done that in my uh, in my uh, email client on my computer and uh, it'll ask to verify the email address. Uh, please sign in with your Apple ID and password. So I want to use that same Apple ID, the in this case the I iPad example Apple ID and once I sign in with that it'll show me on my computer that it's verified and then I'll see it suddenly appear there. You can see it changed from verify to email. So now when I try to FaceTime somebody who's tutorial1 at MacMost.com, this iPad will suddenly uh, come on and uh, so there's a FaceTime call, but not any of my other iOS devices. Now the same exact thing can be done for messages here. So for messages here, I haven't even signed in with my Apple ID, so I'll do that. And now you can see this is the same thing with FaceTime. It will actually ask you, people message you using your email address, which one would you like to use? So I can actually, instead of saying don't even use this one, instead use that same email address I verified already. And since I already verified that I won't need to do that again. So now you can see it looks a little different here and under messages it shows that uh, I'm only going to receive at that one. So you can go either way here. Um, I like the idea of having your iCloud email address basically ring or message all of your devices that you own and having each device have its own individual second email address. That way um, if you need to reach somebody or, or on any of the devices you can use that one and if you need to just reach somebody at a specific device with a message or video chat you can use the email address associated specifically with that device. Now this method isn't without its quirks. For instance I've heard that sometimes you need to sign out of your Apple ID on the messages or FaceTime apps and then sign back in again for it all to work. So keep playing around with it if it doesn't work for you right away. 
And remember to check for those verification emails. If you don't get those and don't click on the link in them then this entire thing won't work. It has to be a verified email address of that Apple ID in order for it to be used in Messages or FaceTime. So I hope you found this useful. Till next time this is Gary with MacMost Now. Want more video tutorials? Just go to MacMost.com, click on the Videos link at the top of the page and then you can view all of the hundreds of MacMost videos by category.